The Greenland ice sheet is made up by year after year of snowfall. As snow falls, it captures a record of the conditions in the atmosphere, which then gets preserved in the layers of ice. So many traces from the past are buried in the ice. There's ash from big volcanic eruptions like Krakatoa. Dust from Ice Age dust storms as far away as Mongolia. And even traces of lead from smelting during the Roman Empire. It's all blown in by the wind, carried down by the snow, and buried down there. Even more importantly, as snow falls, it captures an indirect record of the temperature at the time it was falling. And the ice preserves this temperature information. So scientists drill down to retrieve long cylinders of ancient ice known as ice cores. Now they could use these ice cores to create a record of past temperatures. In effect, they could travel back in time. And in the mid-1980s, they began to realise that the old idea that climate always changed slowly couldn't be more wrong. Today, this freezer in Denver in the United States stores many of the ice cores that have been drilled around the world. I don't think I've ever been as cold in my life. The cores that are stored in these silver tubes are at minus 35 degrees C. They're so valuable that there's backup systems in place to make sure the freezer keeps working if there's a power cut. And even so, the guys that work here carry bleepers 24 hours a day to tell them if there's been a power failure. And I know you don't want to know this, but the fluid in my nostrils is just, just frozen up. It's been said that these ice cores are like having a weather station in Greenland for the last 100,000 years. And by chemically analysing the ice, it's possible to reconstruct the climate, counting back through tens of thousands of years. In the early 1980s, most scientists believed, as this graph shows, that the climate changed only very slowly and gradually through the Ice Age and up to the present warm period. But the ice cores told a completely different story. The climate seemed to be jumping all over the place from warm to cold and back again. What the ice revealed was, was hard to believe. In the past 100,000 years, there had been literally dozens of these incredibly large changes. What's more, the changes didn't happen gradually. In most cases, they occurred in just a few short years. Scientists realised that they'd fundamentally misunderstood how the climate works. Far from changing with imperceptible slowness, it was now beginning to dawn on them that the climate could change big, it could change often, and it could change fast. You know, the discovery of abrupt climate change unleashed a previously hidden literary talent among climate scientists. A talent for metaphor. Climate was an angry beast and we, it was said, were poking it with a stick. Alternatively, climate was a flickering switch, turning on and off between hot and cold periods. But regardless of the metaphor you plump for, it was clear that global warming could mean some nasty surprises. We might wake up one day to find that global warming had triggered a sudden massive shift in climate, like the ones revealed in the ice cores. But in the 1980s, this idea was still controversial. Many scientists, not just skeptics, argued that the theory of rapid climate change was still unproven. And the skeptics had another argument. 
They said that something as vast and complicated as a global climate system was simply too big for we humans to influence. A new discovery was about to change all that. Ugly fact number two came not from a scientific breakthrough, but from a social revolution. After all, this was the 1980s. I was at university, studying hard of course, and one thing I remember is it was the era of big hair. A new age of consumerism. The trouble was, packed within the consumer lifestyle was an environmental time bomb. Aerosols. Aerosols owed their existence to one of the unluckiest men in scientific history. Thomas Midgley invented CFCs. The gases that were used in aerosols and in fridges. Before that, he'd come up with the idea of putting lead in petrol. The trouble was, CFCs had a terrible secret. They appeared to be good news, inert, safe, cheap to manufacture, but when they floated up to the top of the atmosphere, they turned into something deadly. They destroyed a vital gas that protects us all from lethal solar rays. They destroyed ozone. In 1984, British scientists working in Antarctica discovered that the ozone layer that protects the planet had a huge hole in it. Studies from space show that the hole, in blue and pink, is growing year by year, and last year spanned the whole Antarctic continent. The culprit is most probably chloro or fluorocarbons used in aerosols and fridges. Faced with the rapidly growing health risks, the world acted. Midgley's CFCs were banned. At about the same time that his other great invention, lead and petrol, was also being banned. Poor old Midgley ended up the victim of his own inventive genius in one final way. In 1944, he contracted polio. And in order to keep working, he devised a pulley and harness system that would lift him out of bed. But one day, he got tangled in the harness and was strangled by his own contraption. Surely there's never been a more unlucky scientist. The hole in the ozone layer proved beyond doubt that humans were capable of causing catastrophic damage to very significant parts of the atmosphere and in a very short space of time. Another part of the skeptics' case, the idea that the atmosphere was simply too vast for us to have any serious effect on it, had crumbled. And in the 1980s, there was one final ugly fact that challenged the skeptics' view that climate change was nothing to worry about. The heat wave broke 88 high temperature records across the nation since Sunday. Hot town, summer in the city. New York City was one of 12 cities that suffered and sweltered in record high temperatures. Temperatures in some places went as high as 109 degrees. Through the 1980s, the temperature of the planet kept rising building on the warming that had first begun in the 1970s. The 80s have brought us the four hottest years in the last 100. At and least 60 cities reported... Almost every Iowa year games. broke records. Temperatures in the 90s, even in the hundreds. The question for scientists was whether this was just a natural variation or whether it was due to man-made emissions of carbon dioxide, the greenhouse effect. In 1988, one man, top NASA scientist Jim Hansen, decided he knew the answer, and he wanted the whole world to hear what he had to say. His chosen forum was an American congressional inquiry. I would like to draw three main conclusions. Number one, the Earth is warmer in 1988 than at any time in the history of instrumental measurements. Number two, the global warming is now large enough that we can ascribe, with a high degree of confidence, a cause and effect relationship to the greenhouse effect. And number three, our computer climate simulations indicate that the greenhouse effect is already large enough to begin to affect the probability of extreme events such as summer heat waves. 